Hey y'all, today we are going to be doing something completely different. I'm going to be trying a new recipe. I have never, ever, ever canned this before. But we have a lot of cherry tomatoes just sitting in our cooler at the farm. So I am going to be making bruschetta in a jar. Um, let's try this and see how it turns out. Start out by washing your tomatoes really well. And they do have these spots on them. I will try to cut some of those off. But those are honestly just from being picked for a while. Um, they were just sitting in our cooler. We were not able to sell them to the stands that usually buy them because they are starting to close down for the year. And I just couldn't see these go to waste. So I am using cherry tomatoes. But the recipe calls for um, like a paste tomato, like a Roma. But, um, we did not grow any of those this year. So, with those, you would blanch them, skin them, and core them for this recipe. I'm going to go ahead and get all these chopped. I need eight cups of these. Here you go. Thank you. I've got two cups done. Pour it in my bowl. And keep on going. Oh, look at these cherry tomatoes. So cute. There's four cups. Y'all, here's another one. I'm gonna have to ask him what variety he planted, but they're just so cute. Six, eight. So I decided to do nine cups because these are just cut in half. They're not chopped. So what I'm going to do now is raw pack my tomatoes. My jars have been sanitized. Um, those of you that don't know, raw packing just means just put them in the jar as is. You don't have to cook them down or anything. And you want to leave half an inch head space. Okay, I've got five cloves of garlic peeled and I've got the ends cut off right here. I am going to run them through my garlic press and directly into my pot. I love this. Look at how fine it gets it. If y'all don't have one of these, I highly recommend it. I use mine all the time. So, this recipe calls for one cup of dry white wine and the alternative for that is I do not have any the alternative for that is to just use another cup of your cider vinegar 
and it's the same acidity. Um, it's still gonna keep it the same. The flavor obviously is going to be a little bit different. So it says replace the one cup of dry white wine with an equal amount of apple cider vinegar. And then it wants me to increase the two tablespoons of sugar to three. And that's to um, kind of counteract a little bit of that vinegary flavor and give it more of like a sweeter flavor that the wine would give it. So we are going to do it that way. So next I'm going to do two cups of apple cider vinegar. Got my two cups. Just pour it directly into the pot with your garlic. Okay, I'm gonna move that out of the way. Now, it says half a cup of water. Three tablespoons of sugar. I love this measuring spoon. It goes from teaspoon to tablespoon and it is awesome. One, two, three. Okay. Get that out of the way. Two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. This is the one I'm going to be using today. Of course, nothing can be easy to get into, right? There we go. Now, it says to do one tablespoon of dried basil and one tablespoon of dried oregano. Now, I do not have any basil, so thyme is actually a good alternative. So I'm going to do a tablespoon of dried oregano and I'm going to do a tablespoon of dried thyme. Do not use fresh herbs because I have read, let me turn y'all a little bit because I have read that using um, fresh herbs are not safe to can. Um, what I read could be wrong, but I'm just gonna do it the safe way. Also, I could, instead of just using a tablespoon of each of those, I could just use two tablespoons of Italian seasoning, but I do not have any of that either. I used it all in one of my last canning projects, so I have to put that on the grocery list. my oregano. Time. We're going to mix all of this yummy goodness together. We are going to bring these up to a high rolling boil. And then, let's see what else this says. Then I'm going to cover it and boil it for five minutes. We are now at our boil. I'm going to turn the heat down just a smidge to probably about an eight. That way I keep that boil. Um, let me grab a lid. I have my lid on. I'm going to let this boil for five minutes. Our brine is done. I have uh, my water bath canner almost filled up with hot water. And my 
jars have already been raw packed. We did that earlier. Let me drop you down just a little bit. Okay, so. I love this funnel. I love my ladle. Um, let me turn this water off real quick. As I was saying, if y'all would like to look into any of these things that I'm using, I will post my affiliate links down below in the description. Just label your brine into your jars. And then you want to use something plastic, like a spatula or something. Don't use metal. But you just go like that. Oh, let me get you to where you maybe you can see it, huh? And make sure you get the bubbles out. Wipe your rim. That is also very important. That way that ensures a good seal on your jar. Seal it fingertip tight. And there we go. It looks pretty. I'm going to continue on with the rest of my jars. I'm going to have to make one more batch of brine. Look at all these herbs that I have in the top of this one. I'm going to go ahead and make one more half batch of brine. Um, all I have left is that one and that one. I'm going to let these come up to a boil and then I'm going to water bath can what does this say? for 20 minutes and we'll be right back. All right, my 20 minutes is up. Turn this off and I'm going to move this over. I'm going to take my lid off. <clears throat> Lift your lid away from you. That way all that steam does not blow up in your face. The water does look a little discolored. Apparently I had some siphoning. That's okay, it's normal, it happens. I'm going to let these sit here for five minutes and then I'm going to pick this up and take my jars out. I have my jar grabbers right here. I'm just gonna start taking these out look at that oh my gosh look at that y'all they're so pretty okay that's what we got out of it they turned out so beautiful All right y'all that's another project done um, I will probably try these in about a week and a week and a half and we will see what it tastes like and see if it's a keeper recipe that we need to do next year. If so, I will probably make more than that for Christmas gifts. See y'all next time and don't forget to like and subscribe.